Hello there, it's been a summer of heavy downpours, localised showers and thunderstorms giving some flash flooding, especially where the showers have been slow moving, or indeed over urban areas in particular, but highly variable. You go from one place to another and the rainfall amounts vary considerably, and indeed across the country as a whole. This is looking at how much rain has fallen compared to what you would normally expect for the period between the 1st of June to the 9th of August, so essentially the summer so far. And what you can quite clearly see here is the south in particular has been pretty wet uh, through the summer when you add, add everything together. Now, come further north and west, there's a lot more brown here. So parts of Wales, but more especially as you get up into west and southwest Scotland, the northwest and the north of Scotland here, we've been well below average rainfall wise. So while there's been a lot of focus perhaps on the heavy downpours we've seen in the south, uh, over the many weeks of this summer, come further north and actually rainfall has been in short supply, certainly compared to what you would normally expect uh, during this time of the year. Delving into those figures a little bit more then, across Western Scotland, when you add June and July together, it's the second driest on record with only 42% of the average rainfall. Quite similar in Northern Scotland here, rainfall a little bit higher, but still ranking at sixth driest. And in Northern Ireland, where there were concerns about water supplies not too long ago, fifth driest. Uh, June and July uh, period on record. Now in Wales it's a bit wetter here, 67%, but still only two-thirds of what you would normally expect for those two months combined. But in stark contrast, as we've said, southeast and central southern England, 162%, so significantly above average rainfall here, just from the sheer number of showers and thunderstorms we've seen. So it's not been wet everywhere. You may see some national headlines implying it's been a very wet summer, but actually you can see quite clearly in northern parts of the UK, rainfall has been pretty uh, short supply uh, over recent weeks, even though we have seen some showers in the last couple of days or so. We're going to reverse those fortunes actually over the next few days because we've got high pressure to the south this time instead of to the north and low pressure then coming in from the west over the next couple of days. So on Wednesday, rain getting into Ireland, pushing into western Scotland, but actually for much of England and Wales, a lot of dry weather initially, but this weather front will eventually come in to western areas as we go through the latter part of the day. Ahead of it though, with the sunshine, we could still hit mid-20s, 25 degrees or so across parts of East Anglia and South East England with some hazy sunshine around. So that first front comes in, it weakens a bit, but the remnants of that front will still be there on Thursday across some central parts, the Midlands into parts of East Anglia. A little bit of uncertainty about the exact position of this where it will stall. It's a very weak feature, but it might provide the focus for a few showers on Thursday. So that's something to bear in mind if you're trying to make hay, for example. I think the far south and southeast could stay dry uh, throughout if that front doesn't get quite that far south. But already the next frontal system coming in with more wind, some rain coming into Ireland, again pushing into Western Scotland on Thursday as well. So a succession of fronts coming in from the west, but weakening significantly as they push southeast and tend to stall. And then as we go overnight and into Friday, again, another bridge trying to build into southern areas, but another area of low pressure coming in with some more rain potentially getting into Ireland on Friday probably getting into some other western parts of the UK towards the very end of the day. Now again we could still have the dregs of that first weather front somewhere over central Britain so even though it looks dry on here I wouldn't rule out a couple of showers developing from the remnants of that front across the Midlands Eastern England for example on Friday but generally speaking the closer you are to the south coast I think a lot of the next few days uh, indeed much of this week will end up being largely dry with some decent sunny spells towards the second half of the week and still fairly warm as well. Now by the weekend there's a lot of uncertainty about that area of low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. This is four different computer models ideas of where it thinks that low will be or develop by the time we get through to Sunday. So the general idea is it will probably track so slowly somewhat northeasterly across the UK as we go through Saturday and into Sunday and you can see some of these models have quite a deep low to the northeast of Scotland by Sunday uh, others still hold it well back to the west by this point and others here barely develop it at all just sort of a slack area of low pressure with a number of heavy showers so there is a lot of uncertainty about the detail this weekend other than low pressure is likely to become a little bit more dominant for a time even further south but exactly how much rain or where the showers are going to crop up is still too early to say. So if you're relying on app forecasts online or on your phone, this is going to chop a change, I think, quite a bit over the next few days just because of what's going on uh, over the weekend. And depending on where the low sets up will affect the type of air that we can bring into the UK. So in these scenarios, this one up here and this one down here, we've got quite a breezy westerly and generally cool air wrapping around the backside of that low. So that would keep temperatures near or even a touch below average. But in this setup, if the low stays out west and we get more of a southerly on the forward side, 
then it could still be pretty warm. We could still see mid-20s over the weekend. So also that low affecting the sort of temperatures we'll see through the weekend as well. But generally speaking, in the south, probably not too many showers, a greater risk perhaps by the time we get through to Sunday and Monday. But further north, the risk of rain is generally quite higher throughout the course of the weekend. And so that leads us quite nicely into this chart, uh, which isn't something we show you very often, but it is quite crucial to the weather and how it might evolve next week. This is basically a plot of the uh, pattern going on at jet stream level. So this isn't the surface pressure. This is looking six, seven miles above the ground. The reason I'm showing this to you is because we've got this trough sitting over the UK. I've drawn it in here with this sort of dashed blue line. So within this upper trough here, what you tend to get is a lot of cool air in the upper atmosphere and when you get the daytime heating going on at ground level that creates instability in a number of showers so whenever you see this trough on the chart here you instantly think unstable and showery sort of environment now depending on the exact shape uh, position of this trough by the time we get through to Sunday this is at the end of the weekend we could still stay somewhat dry in the southeast because we're just ahead of that trough uh, but there is a bit of a debate about exactly the position and shape of this over the weekend that's not particularly interesting in this respect. What is interesting is what happens next. This trough is likely to slide east towards Scandinavia into the early part of next week. But what we could find is a piece within the base of the trough breaks off into this cut off upper low that sits somewhere over the nearby continent. Now, some models want to do this, and that would then bring the risk of some rain and showers perhaps into southern and southeastern parts of the UK. Other models are less keen and generally just clear the main trough, which is over here uh, in Scandinavia, and doesn't really break uh, this small cutoff low. So that is one thing we need to keep a very close eye on because the general vibe for next week is for this high pressure. This is our upper high here, building in from the Atlantic to settle things down. But the caveat is we could still see this small upper low, this upper disturbance sitting there over the nearby continent, exactly where, you know, it's too early to say really, it could be a bit further south and not affect us at all. But if this does come off, it could bring the threat of some showers or thunderstorms on a few days, particularly across southern and eastern parts of the UK when you're closest to this uh, upper low. So it's something to bear in mind. But broadly speaking, high pressure will be building in more from the west as we go through next week. So things should start to settle down a bit more widely. Now we could still see the odd weak front coming around the top of this high into the northwest. So not completely dry or weak necessarily, uh, but overall more dry weather than we have seen. Uh, for quite a while actually and that kind of shows up here on our ensemble graph here for Oxford this is looking at the mean sea level pressure of course each of these grey lines is a different computer model the red line is the average of all of those and you can see this little dip in the uh, lines here over the weekend that's with that low pressure coming in but again there's a bit of a spread about how deep that low might get how far south it might have an influence and that sort of thing and then there's definitely a trend for pressure to build as we go through the middle part of next week you can see that quite clearly here but again a pretty large spread is it not very much in terms of rise of pressure or is it quite a substantial uh, rise in pressure? That's the question mark really at this stage. And then there is a trend towards that to weaken a little bit as we head towards next weekend. But by that stage, the spread is pretty large. Some of these models are coming up with some fairly active lows coming in off the Atlantic towards next weekend. So this is around the 22nd. Uh, but others keep the high pressure hanging on pretty much right the way through to the end. So there's a lot of uncertainty by the end of next week and into next weekend, but it does look like on balance, pressure probably will remain relatively high. We're not talking 1,040 millibars. It's still you know, generally around 1,020 perhaps, but uh, relatively high compared to what you can get at this time of the year. And that is where you could see these uh, rather deeper areas of low pressure coming in. And again, the position of these weather features will be crucial as to the type of air that we can draw in. So this is looking at the air mass about a mile above the ground. So these values on the left hand side, that's the temperature one mile above the ground, not at ground level. Uh, and what you can see here, the black dash line, that's average for the time of the year. So we're going through August, that typically starts to fall away as we head towards uh, autumn. But you can see sort of up and down, but it's roughly around average a lot of the time over the next few days. There's a subtle hint here, perhaps we might get something a little bit cooler early part of next week on the back side of that low that comes in this weekend. But then there are some members here, they're on their own, a minority, but it's always worth paying attention to these signals sometimes because there is the potential later on in the month of some hotter weather to return, uh, depending on exactly where the lows and highs position themselves later on. But there is a signal in some other data that we're looking at, not just on here, that it could actually turn a bit warmer 
at the end of the month. And you can see even the average line here starts coming up towards the end. And there are many members actually even warmer than that. So uh, there, I wouldn't rule out the potential for hot weather returning again later in August and perhaps even into early September. It's a bit early really to nail down that detail, but just something to bear in mind. Uh, so if you are trying to make hay, it's a little bit uncertain next week. On balance, there's quite a bit of dry weather, but trying to nail down on a site-by-site -site basis is going to be tricky at this stage. So give our forecasters a ring and we can keep you up to date with how things are evolving over the next few days. And uh, we're always looking at all of this information. We're available every day, six in the morning through till six in the evening. Now beyond that, through the latter part of August, again, this is looking at our pressure anomaly. You can quite clearly see that high pressure across the UK or to the north of the UK and then over into Scandinavia. So this is where most of the settled weather is going to be. Signals are much, much weaker further south across Europe. And so we're going to see daytime showers and thunderstorms almost anywhere, really. It's going to be a bit of a messy, variable picture across Europe as to where these crop up. But again, that risk of some large hail and local flooding will be there. Uh, but the browner colours here indicating below average rainfall, but not necessarily completely dry. So even though high pressure can still be in charge, you can still get these small upper disturbances that can bring a few isolated showers or thunderstorms, as we saw during the hot weather we had in mid-July, where we saw some rather intense thunderstorms developing in an otherwise fairly settled looking pattern. Temperature wise, well, at the moment, near or slightly above average, but actually this hides a lot of information within the ensemble data we look at. And so it is possible we could see some very warm weather during this time frame, just depending on how things evolve uh, a little bit nearer time. Then as we head into early September, still that signal, although weaker because it's further away, for higher than average pressure to the north of the UK, but again, a very weak signal across much of mainland Europe. And you can see a rather uh, messy precipitation picture here with areas of near or above average rainfall. So it does look quite active, I think, for a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity across Europe into early September. Slightly below average rainfall in the UK, but again, it's not completely dry. We could still have that threat of some showers and thunderstorms in there. But on balance, more dry days than wet, probably, for the latter part of August and indeed on into the early part of September. So just to summarize some of that, it's still pretty wet in the Northwest this week, but next week as high pressure builds in, generally speaking, it will become more dry, uh, dry for many places, but there will still be that risk of some showers, as I say, especially if that upper low lingers close to Southern Britain. Generally drier then through the latter part of August, but again, if the high isn't built right overhead, we could still see a few scattered showers or thunderstorms. Uh, just not a washout as it has been lately perhaps in the south and the potential perhaps for some very warm or even hot conditions but again low confidence at this stage if that will come off we'll have to keep a close eye on that a little bit closer to time and you can follow the latest day-by-day -day forecast as ever by following us on social media bye for now